Marvel at the beginning, DC behind. Roger travels through Marvel, awakening the abilities of mutants. Evolution, Adaptation. X. Men, it's not the future, Magneto. It's not the future either. In this world that discriminates against mutants, where does he go? Superheroes. Supervillain. Roger suddenly appeared behind the storyteller and kicked him away. Please don't judge me by the superficial concepts of evil and justice. I only believe in myself and do whatever I want. Keywords of the novel. The God of the Beautiful Mankind with no pop-ups, the complete collection download of The God of the Beautiful Mankind TXT, and the latest chapter reading of The God of the Beautiful Mankind. Chapter 1. Parent Sacrifice to Heaven, Unlimited Magic. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Parent Sacrifice to Heaven, Unlimited Magic at Noon, the sun rises high and bright, with a gentle breeze brushing against the face. It feels like a warm hand gently caressing it, making people feel happy and comfortable all over. On this good day, flowers were supposed to dance and birds were singing, but here is the peaceful New York City, with sunshine and places that cannot be seen. In the corner of the street, Rogers Wilson sat in a pool of scattered stones, his clothes torn apart. He was battered by the stones in the pool, his head torn and bleeding. But now, he couldn't find any wounds on his body, only his tattered clothes stained with blood silently recounted everything that had just happened. Now, panic and confusion have replaced the anger before the murder. Beside Rogers, there was a blonde boy with a bitten throat, looking only fourteen or fifteen years old. Killed. Everyone, run away. This demon has killed. The mutant killed Robertson. Go and notify the adults. Damn mutant, he can't even kill him. He's a devil. Run quickly. The boys holding stones scattered in fear, and when the chaotic footsteps dissipated, the surroundings became quiet. Only the sound of Robertson desperately breathing and drinking remained, his pupils gradually losing focus, and blood continued to gush out of his body. Regret and fear spread in his mind, but he had no chance. Rogers had a strong smell of blood that made him nauseous, and he fantasized about being taken away by the police and then locked up in a military laboratory as an experimental object, or simply destroyed. He laughed self-deprecatingly, his home was clearly burned down by robbers, his cheap parents were burned alive, and only he awakened the ability of mutants to survive. But those police are actually searching for themselves everywhere, not those two robbers. And, I have become the devil in everyone's mouth, bastard. These children even attack and curse themselves, it is not difficult to guess that they are deeply influenced by their parents behind this. The only reason is that Rogers is a mutant. Rogers was being chased and intercepted, with adults watching coldly and choosing to report to the police to catch him. It seems like the whole world has become Rogers' enemy. Even last night, these neighbors were still laughing and praising themselves for being handsome, joking with their parents. I'm a mutant, it's none of your business. Do mutants deserve to die? Human nature is truly ironic. If it weren't for Rogers running fast this morning, he would have been arrested by the police and sent to the mutant prison as an experimental subject. But for now, it seems that nothing has changed. Even if I have the mentality of a past life, I cannot resist fighting these guys. The more I hit them, the louder their insults become. The stronger the way I beat myself, the greater my anger becomes. So in a fit of anger, he bit through Robertson's throat. When these guys were beating themselves up, they didn't even show any mercy. If it weren't for his quick self-recovery, he would have been beaten to death long ago. My parents are all dead, and I might even become an experimental subject. I'm also one of the unlucky travelers, right? Rogers thought silently. Yes, he is a traveler who came through last night. There were no car accidents, no lightning strikes, and as soon as my eyes closed, I could pass through. My original name was Roger, now my name is Rogers Wilson. After learning from his mother that there were mutants and Captain America in this world, 
he knew he had come to marvel and was still thinking about how to acquire superpowers. Now it's okay, I have superpowers, but my parents are gone, and I'm almost finished. The so dot called sacrificial ceremony for parents is boundless in power. The rich rely on technology, while the poor rely on mutation. Rogers, blessed with two major buffs, embarked on the path of mutation as a mutant. Rogers' mutant ability is adaptation, also known as evolution. The process of the matter is as follows. Last night, Rogers had just crossed over and their family had just moved to New York, where they encountered a burglary. Two guys wearing headsets rushed into the house with firearms, tied the hands and feet of Rogers and his family of three, and then rummaged through boxes and cabinets. Before leaving, a fire burned everything up. Rogers awakened the abilities of mutants under a strong will to survive, and as a result of adapting to the flames, he achieved rapid self-healing. He walked out of the big fire, but his parents were burned to death. That's all, but the cost is the scorching pain, the suffocating feeling of thick smoke pouring into the lungs, and the loss of parents and family. Although he doesn't have much emotional attachment to his parents and family here. Rogers tidied up his mood and got up to run towards the manhole cover in the distance. He swore he would find those two damn robbers and smash their bones one by one. Torment them until their mental breakdown occurs, and he must return all the pain he has experienced. He had never experienced that kind of painful torment in his entire life, scorched in the flames, desperate in suffocation, until the mutant awakened his abilities, his life was more than death, his body was burned and restored time and time again, until the rope that bound his hands and feet was burned off. That is a terrifying scene that language cannot depict. Rogers's small and skinny body opened the manhole cover, but fortunately there were no adults nearby. Otherwise, at the age of 13, he wouldn't have been able to run away. After all, his ability is currently limited to rapid self-healing. Power or something, it's no different from ordinary children. Stepping into the dirty and foul-smelling dark passage, Rogers closed the lid. As the last glimmer of light disappeared, Rogers couldn't help but shed tears. Confusion and helplessness fill the mind and mind. He doesn't know what to do next, hiding in the dark to exercise his abilities and letting others seek revenge. But what does he eat? Relying on robbery. This is Marvel Universe. Joining the mutant organization may be a good choice. At this moment, Rogers wiped away his tears and groped for the cement wall in the darkness, walking forward. The top priority now was to stay away from here. Let's live on and talk about the rest. A few days later. On the hallway of Charles Genius School, three people engaged in intense intellectual exchange. Professor, this child. He killed someone, but he doesn't have any superpowers out of control. Are you sure you want to take him to the mutant school? Chin prepared to persuade Professor X that their school cannot accommodate such murderers. Otherwise, the results of those previous efforts will be lost, and the human high dot level will discriminate against mutants even more, and then the lion will speak up loudly. The news of Roger's killing and escaping was broadcasted on TV, and the host also kindly reminded New York viewers to be careful when closing doors and locking windows at night. Therefore, Professor X noticed Rogers. Professor X sat in a wheelchair, his eyes filled with wisdom and kindness, and his smooth head gleamed with wisdom. Those children attacked him first, and as I just saw, it wasn't entirely his fault. We should go pick him up and guide him. This child not only has the ability to heal quickly, but he is very special, he said Scott, wearing specially made black glasses and displaying a handsome chin and partial face frowned and said, but he killed someone, we. Go ahead, Scott. Everyone should have a chance to be redeemed and forgiven. He is the child of a mutant. Scott glanced at the piano and was speechless. I hope you're right, Professor. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Professor X's Visit. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Professor X's visit Rogers ran wildly with a black cloth covering his head, 
revealing only two small holes for his eyes to see the way. He held a large piece of bread in his hand, which he had snatched from a customer in the nearby noodle shop. Mom, fuck. He hasn't paid yet. The bakery owner cursed, his chubby body unable to support him to go out and find that little brat. The guest walked out of the bakery cursing and dispelling the desire to make a purchase. There are too many people on the streets outside. The pedestrians didn't care about what happened, and no one stopped Rogers. Look at him getting dirty, stay away from him. He escaped smoothly and hid at the street corner, bending over to support the wall, panting heavily. Yes, Rogers really went to rob. He was hungry for another whole day, his stomach burning like fire, and his mutant abilities continued to strengthen his stomach as a result. The strength of the stomach, in turn, makes the stomach acid hotter, so mutants continue to strengthen the stomach, forming a vicious cycle. He couldn't stand flipping through the trash can for food anymore. He searched for a suitable target for a long time before grabbing the bread. That thing doesn't belong to you, it's not right of you to do so. Just as Rogers was smelling the aroma of wheat and preparing to take off his headband to savor it. A man's magnetic voice came to Rogers' mind, sounding like a middle-aged man. Rogers trembled all over. Who? He turned his head and looked around, but didn't notice anything. He knew he had encountered a superpower and felt a bit nervous and alert inside. Don't be afraid, child. You can call me Charles or Professor X, and I can help you. Professor X. Rogers was momentarily stunned, and then he thought of something else. He was stunned because Professor X could read thoughts and memories, and the things about comics in his mind, you're very special, Rogers, you need guidance, Professor X continued. Because he found himself unable to read Rogers' thoughts and memories, Although the distance between the two was a bit far, he could only perceive a few emotions of Rogers and establish some simple spiritual connections with him. Rogers is even difficult to find through his telepathy. There is no doubt that this is due to possessing strong spiritual defense capabilities. This is the main reason why Professor X wants to bring Rogers back to the mutant school. In order to find Rogers in New York, he put in a lot of effort, even wearing the helmet with a big blue X. Rogers had just activated the X gene and possessed rapid self-healing and extremely powerful psychic defense abilities. Professor X believes that if Rogers is kept wandering outside, it is very dangerous for both Rogers and others. Because Rogers has just activated the X gene and already possesses two superpowers, who knows if Rogers will awaken other superpowers in the future. Once Rogers learns to control his own abilities, as a child, it is too dangerous and easily exploited. Special. Rogers didn't know if he should cry or laugh, could he not be special? He was a time traveler, a parent worshipper at the beginning, and a time traveler picking up trash to eat. Yes, I cannot read your thoughts, Rogers. Your spiritual power is very strong, and you need someone to guide you. I will take you back to the mutant school and let you learn here. Unable to read. Are you a fake Professor X? Why don't I feel like I have any spiritual power? Now Professor X is knocking on my door, how should I choose? Join the mutant school. Roger stayed in place thinking, forgetting to even eat the bread he was thinking about. Child, you go to the police station to surrender first, and I will arrange for someone to pick you up. Professor X's kind voice appeared again. No need, I don't need your help. Upon hearing these words, Rogers had a plan in his heart and refused Professor X. Because Professor X is too kind, his ideas are destined to be impossible to achieve, and he still needs to find those two robbers. How can he turn himself in? The high-dot-level human beings have been deceiving Professor X and surrendering to the police station, and then what? Will the police and military agree to be taken away? The superpower exhibited by oneself is rapid self-healing. Think about Wade, also known as the Death Attendant, who also has self-healing abilities and has been tormented by so-called evil organizations through experiments. American executives don't want to be immortal. Rogers didn't believe it. 
and he killed someone without losing control of his superpowers. Surrender at the police station is simply falling into a trap, with no guarantee of safety and unreliable. And the Marvel Universe is constantly changing. Who knows if Professor X in this universe is a despicable and shameless old bastard, and Magneto is the benevolent leader of mutants. That's really hard to say. Rather than relying on Professor X for hope, Rogers is more willing to believe in himself. Since one's thoughts and memories cannot be read, one can easily develop for a period of time without being bound. Mutant schools can to some extent constrain mutated individuals from learning combat and enhancing their own abilities, as they have their own standards of judgment. If I were to go to the mutant prison, it would be even more tragic. No, child, you don't know how dangerous your power is. Rogers nibbled on the bread, feeling the sweetness of starch and savoring it slowly. He began to stimulate his mutant abilities, and then carefully perceived Professor X's spiritual power. If Professor X kept connecting with his spiritual communication, then Rogers might really want to thank him. Anyway, he claims to have strong spiritual abilities, what if it's true? If you activate your spiritual power yourself, the days ahead will be much better. Hypnosis brainwashing, modifying consciousness, Rogers doesn't mind using it. After all, life is no longer guaranteed, who can control so much? Yes, Rogers' mutant ability can not only be passively triggered, but also actively controlled. Rogers can use his mind to control his adaptation or evolution. For example, if you scratch yourself with a knife, both passive and active triggers can be triggered, and your self-healing ability will be enhanced. The enhancement is very weak, but it is indeed strengthening. Rogers has tried. This is completely different from the abilities of a mutant named Darwin. The reason why he has rapid self-healing may be due to the increase brought about by the awakening of the X gene, which will gradually improve later. After all, there is a limit to the abilities of mutants. At this stage, Rogers can only have rapid self-healing in a short period of time, and cannot have rapid self-healing or super self-healing. He hasn't grown up yet, and his body is only in his teens. With the passage of time, as long as Rogers works hard to develop himself, he believes he will definitely be an Omega-level mutant. Or perhaps it's like this now, with external energy coming into contact with him, Rogers wants to try to detect this energy and learn it himself. If possible, he will also try to get an electric shock or come into contact with some radioactive energy. Being a Thunderbolt Dharma King is also quite fragrant. His passivity will enhance himself according to the environment, and his initiative can cooperate with passivity, perhaps giving rise to different superpowers. Rogers is willing to refer to his passivity as environmental adaptation and his initiative as learning evolution. Of course, provided that all these speculations are true, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Spiritual Power you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Spiritual Power Child, listen to me. We will not harm you. There is no discrimination here, no one will attack or scold you, let alone hunger. There are also many children the same age as you. This is a school exclusively for mutants. Mr. Charles, I'm going to seek revenge now. Can you also help me find those two robbers? Rogers said coldly. Professor X across from him fell silent for a moment. What he said should be very attractive to a wandering child, but Rogers remained indifferent and asked such a question. However, Professor X does not intend to lie. He believes that the awakening of mutant abilities has given Rogers a certain degree of mature wisdom, just like he did back then. However, Rogers's heart was filled with hatred and needed proper guidance. Professor X showed even more compassion towards Rogers. I can help you find them, but I will take them to the police station, Rogers. We have no right to torture or kill without authorization. Really? But those police officers were searching me before I killed anyone, not criminals. I wouldn't believe the police. What's the difference between Rogers pretending he didn't hear what Professor X said and farting? I can't do it 
they can do it. Why? Because I am a mutant. They hit themselves, cursed themselves, and accidentally killed them, which is also what they deserve, because they wanted to kill themselves from the beginning. Rogers has come to a deep understanding in these days that only strength can protect himself, followed by money, and everything else is nonsense. Without strength, it means having nothing. With strength, one can dominate their own destiny and say no to things they don't want to do. This world is like this, compared to one's past life, there is extraordinary power here. Child, you are too extreme. Professor X felt a bit disappointed as he watched the mutant child's heart filled with hatred and hostility towards humanity, and his heart also felt uncomfortable. He has always wanted to create a world where mutants and humans coexist peacefully. So if you're old enough to talk, should I be beaten to death? Rogers continued to argue with Professor X, and he had a special feeling that actively activating his mutant abilities could indeed achieve learning superpowers similar to evolution. His mutant abilities are more like adaptation plus evolution, where adaptation is a passive skill and evolution is an active skill. Now, all he needs to do is chat with Professor X while eating bread and waiting for himself to control his spiritual power. Child, your emotions tell me that you have something to hide from me. Guess what I'm hiding from you? At the mutant school, Professor X advised Rogers while notifying Cheen and Scott of Rogers' location. Although he had long noticed something hidden from himself in Roger's emotions, Charles was also procrastinating, which was why he did not disconnect his spiritual connection. He didn't know that Roger's true mutant ability was something else. Roger's finished nibbling on the bread and his mouth was a bit dry. He looked up at the bright sunlight and silently walked towards the manhole cover. He knew he still had to stay there for a while. Mr. Charles, I don't think you're right. I think. Entering the sewer, Rogers still chatted confidently with Professor X, and the vague feeling became clearer, but it would take some time for it to fully manifest in front of Rogers. Rogers, are you moving? No, don't keep making mistakes, kid, you're in danger now. No, Mr. Charles, it's really dangerous if I don't leave. My life can only be protected by myself. In summary, Rogers now has delusions of persecution, he lacks a sense of security, and will not trust anyone. This damn world has forced him into this way. In the quiet sound of water flow, Rogers' footsteps stood out somewhat. He is now barely able to see something in the dark environment, which is the result of his mutant ability to adapt to the environment and gain some night vision skills. He chatted with the guy in his mind while walking aimlessly through the sewer to prevent himself from being caught by X.Men. Professor X is able to locate the target, which is common sense. And these days he hasn't been completely hiding in the sewer doing nothing. After barely being able to see anything, he began to summarize the distribution of sewage roads, working day and night to investigate the situation near his burnt home. Since the two robbers caught the new movers, they should have a stronghold nearby an eyeliner. Roger looked for the same target. He thought it could always be found. But if this robbery is just a coincidence, then Rogers can only curse at the thief a few times. Unfortunately, he hasn't gained much yet. After all, collecting intelligence is still his first time doing it. Moreover, he is not familiar with New York, which has caused a lot of trouble and difficulties. I wandered around the sewer and encountered several mice along the way. Their situation is similar to that of Rogers, hiding in the sewer for various reasons, with lifeless eyes and a withered appearance. In just one sentence, they are just a shell. The real ones have long died in this hopeless city, leaving only a walking corpse. They are not as good as homeless people. Whenever he saw them, Rogers only had a strong determination to believe in and rely on himself. He struggled through the journey and had unlimited potential. Although the beginning was a bit difficult, he didn't want to give up and become these mice. Professor X saw that his persuasion was unsuccessful, so he didn't waste his words. He just asked Phoenix, Cheen, and Laser, Scott, to quickly bring Rogers's secret back. 
he believes that Roger's current thinking is very dangerous, and if he is not careful, he will go in the direction of Magneto. Of course, Professor X has not disconnected his spiritual connection. Rogers is very smart and needs to locate his approximate location. Professor X doesn't bother himself and keeps opening spiritual connections, while Rogers enjoys his leisure. He doesn't know who Professor X will send to find him, but he will try to avoid it as much as possible until he awakens his psychic power, blocks Charles's telepathy, and prevents him from finding himself. If none of these works, then shamelessly join in, and revenge can only be found in another way. The sewage system in New York City is very open and complex, and various ghosts and snakes often use it to do some shady things. No wonder the supervillains behind always like to burrow into the sewer and run away. By drilling into this area, one is likely to confuse those who are not familiar with the sewer route. Rogers is doing this now, I don't even know where I am, can you still find me? End of this chapter Chapter 4 External Cheat to Account You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 External Cheat to Account A brand new car was driving on the streets of New York, and Phoenix drove towards a constantly moving light spot in her mind, getting closer and closer. This guy is in trouble, I hope he won't cause any bigger trouble, the driving Phoenix suddenly spoke up. The professor said he wants revenge, which means his heart is full of hatred and he doesn't want to go with us. Laser I sat in the back seat and had no favorable impression of the mutant killer, but he still said, do your best. The professor values him very much. He is just a child, and his experience can be understood. If he is willing to admit his mistake and correct it, we cannot give up on him. But if he gives up on himself, this is a different story. Compared to the phoenix and laser eyes who drive by car, Rogers appears a bit clumsy and slow as he twists and turns his legs in the sewer. Occasionally encountering dead ends and drainage valves, Rogers is very troubled as he is constantly being approached by various troubles. Even the police, Professor X has found himself, which is really a difficult start. He roast and walked back. Because he needs to rest now, he sits at the intersection so that even if the enemy comes, he can find a direction to run away at any time. Roger sat on the damp cement board, barely free of mold and the smell of dead mice. It has been a long time since I last chatted with Professor X. As his mutant abilities continue to sense and learn spiritual power, his brain is now feeling a bit dizzy and his mental strength is haggard. Rogers closed his eyes and rested, wiping the fine beads of sweat on his forehead with his shoulders. He was panting heavily and his legs were a bit soft. More importantly, his stomach was hungry again, and learning spiritual power consumed a lot of his energy. In my current state, I'm afraid I'll be found sooner or later. Faced with an unknown crisis, he has done his best. But now is not the time for the brain to rest, we can only endure the discomfort and strive to stay awake. If I were to fall asleep now, I might have been taken by someone if I woke up again. It's here, but I didn't see the target. Phoenix stopped the car and parked it on the roadside. According to the position given by Professor X, the target stopped moving and they found it here. They have overlapping points with Rogers, Professor X is not wrong. But there is no Rogers around, there are few pedestrians in this area, and the marker point is in the center of the road which can capture the whole picture at a glance. It's either in the sky or underground. The laser eye looked up at the sky, only white clouds and blue sky. Okay, it's underground. Sewer. Phoenix frowned, with a hint of disgust scattered in her pupils. All right, find him as soon as possible. Girls who would like to go to the dirty, messy, and smelly environment like the sewer. Rogers's head was becoming increasingly dull, his eyelids were fighting, and he hesitated to continue learning and evolve spiritual power. This consumes too much energy in energy, he can't sleep here. Huh, Rogers slowly exhaled and stood up to continue walking. Damn Professor X, damn police, damn world, my golden finger, do you really exist? 
Rogers indulged himself and slapped his face hard, hitting with a slap sound. He fantasized about killing everyone after he got out of trouble, in order to motivate himself and motivate himself. Buzz hiss, suddenly, Rogers' brain buzzed, and the piercing tinnitus made him crouch down in pain while covering his ears. Gone, your grandmother. Rogers' facial expression was wrinkled and he gritted his teeth hard. He almost rolled his eyes and fainted on the spot. This sudden change came and went quickly. Rogers felt his tense nerves suddenly relax, and his whole body felt a lot more comfortable. He had something extra. And learning evolution has stopped. Is this psychic power? Rogers felt as if his perceptual ability had strengthened a little. More importantly, the scene before his eyes changed. He found himself in a dark space, surrounded by a blue bubble, with a semi-transparent middle dot aged bald man standing motionless outside the bubble. Surrounding the blue bubbles were some colorful mist, making it difficult to see what was further away. And in front of me, there is a door that has been half opened, composed of white light. He cannot see the situation behind the door. A wave of information also surged in. This is Roger's level of consciousness, and this white door is the hub for crossing the universe. Once the door is fully open, he can shuttle through it to other worlds. As for the blue bubble, the information did not say what it was, only that it would protect Roger's thoughts and consciousness. My golden finger has always been on my consciousness level. Why doesn't it appear directly? Or does it have to wait until the door is completely open before it appears? I just saw the golden finger in advance because I was born with spiritual power and entered the consciousness level. Also, is this what Professor X is talking about mind defense? Rogers remained silent for a moment, the blue bubble was beyond his control, not his power at all. There's nothing unexpected about it, Rogers smiled, as if speaking to himself. Where did this spiritual defense shield come from? Where did the golden finger come from again? Why do I travel by myself? Rogers didn't think much, he wouldn't explore certain possibilities until his power was not strong enough. Kid. You. You have mastered a trace of spiritual power so quickly. Your talent is so good. Kid, you don't have to hide, come to the mutant school. I promise you won't be hurt in any way. At this moment, middle dot aged Professor X outside the bubble looked at Rogers inside with a hint of shock and spoke up. Professor X can see here. He was moved, and if Rogers could receive his education, he thought Rogers might be the next piano player. The blue mind defense shield, Professor X thought it belonged to Rogers, but he didn't know how to use it yet. Rogers does not yet have a body on the level of consciousness, and his newly born spiritual power is very weak. How to expel Professor X? Give this bubble a try. Rogers ignored Professor X and controlled his weak spiritual power to spread out, penetrating through a blue bubble that was a layer of semi-transparent white energy. Child. Just as Professor X was anxious, Rogers couldn't hear his voice or see his people. The spiritual connection has been broken. The thin, almost invisible, semi-transparent white energy wrapped around the outer wall of the bubble, seemed to have achieved some kind of transformation with the blue bubble, completely blocking Professor X's spiritual power. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Escape and Pursuit You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Escape and Pursuit Professor X can't find him here, and similarly, Roger's spiritual strength is still weak and he doesn't support him to do more. Opening his eyes, the swelling and pain in his head made Rogers massage his temples, which was a manifestation of excessive use of spiritual power. His eyes sparkled with light, particularly striking in this dark sewer. The conjecture is true, you can learn by touching it. X Gene, you really gave me a big surprise. Getting up, Rogers continued walking towards the distance. What? Isn't he a self-healing person? Phoenix, who had just entered the sewer, was suspended in mid-air when she suddenly received a call from Professor X. 
As the laser gazed at Phoenix talking to herself, he knew it was a conversation with Professor X. Upon hearing the content, he couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. Something seems to have changed. Follow me, that guy has mastered spiritual power. Feng Wangna picked up the laser eye from her armpit and flew him forward quickly, as if holding a self-dot-propelled laser cannon. At the same time, she ignited her own imagination and telepathy, hoping to find Rogers nearby. The distance between the two sides is so close that there will be some surprises. Rogers's footsteps suddenly stopped, and an instinctive escape emotion almost dominated his brain. Without hesitation, he rushed towards the nearby sewer entrance and exit. The instinct of his body tells him that something dangerous is approaching quickly from behind. It was as if encountering a life and death crisis, with a chilling feeling. What exactly is the situation? Rogers climbed the stairs while looking behind him. This is his first time encountering such a thing, how could his body still warn him? Spider Induction Climbing out of the sewer and quickly closing the lid consumed a lot of physical energy. He is now located in a small alley, surrounded by several black people squatting in the corner smoking. They glanced at Rogers who had emerged from the sewer and didn't pay much attention. And Rogers didn't dare to stop either. He ran forward with his legs up, and the stench on his body caused passers-by to dodge one after another. Rogers' mind was running rapidly and the sense of crisis behind him dissipated a lot, but his body was still reminding Rogers to stay away from here. Who is watching me? Is it from the mutant school? I came too soon, right? Rogers dared not continue running on the street. He rushed into a shopping mall and was despised wherever he went. He had various black stains and a foul odor on his body, making it difficult for him not to pay attention. Professor X can read minds. There are too many people around me, so I should have already exposed my position by now. Get out of the way. Rogers let out a loud roar and rushed into the clothing store, holding onto his clothes and running away. Mom provoke fake, notify the security guard, little devil, don't run. The young waiter in the store caught up, and Rogers ran towards the crowded area, with a stronger sense of crisis behind him. He looked left and right, looking for a way to escape. Suddenly, the entire mall froze in place, as if time had paused. Grass. This is Professor X controlling the people in the mall, causing their thinking to stop running. Rogers gritted his teeth, took off his tattered clothes, put on the clothes he had just grabbed, and then entered a clothing store, picking up a pair of children's shorts and a red wig to continue running. He doesn't know where the person chasing him has gone, he only knows that someone is chasing him, it's Professor X. In a panic, out of breath, Rogers rushed into the safe passage, distinguished the direction from left to right, and ran towards the left stairs with gritted teeth. The stairs spread downwards until they reached the parking lot, and Rogers noticed that the people here had also been paused in their thinking. He saw a woman who had just opened the car door and got off. Heaven never stops me. Rogers snatched the key from the woman's hand, climbed into the driver's cabin, and threw his pants and wig in the passenger seat. He originally wanted to disguise himself and see if he could dodge, but now it seems he doesn't need it anymore. Start the engine, shift gears, step on the accelerator, and it's all done in one go. Let's go. Professor X suffered from a swollen head and was somewhat disappointed when he didn't catch Rogers. At such a distance, the number of people he can pause for a shopping mall is already the limit. Cheen, he drove away. Nowadays, mutants suffer from discrimination and hostility from the American people, and they rarely show their differences in the crowd. Professor X also does not want Phoenix and Laser Eyes to use their superpowers in public. Suspending a shopping mall is already a taboo and cannot be continued. Phoenix and Laser I need to return in the same way, destroy surveillance and video footage, and have no time to pursue Rogers. Rogers calmed his heart, feeling the disappearing sense of crisis behind him, and breathed a long sigh of relief. Who are you? Where is my mother? A timid girl's voice came from the back seat of the car. 
Rogers was startled and looked through the rearview mirror, then breathed a sigh of relief. It's a blonde little lowly. Children. It's okay then. Not right. If someone were there, wouldn't Professor X have seen me? Who are you? I am your father. Rogers, feeling frustrated, replied impatiently. Doodle doodle. Rogers honked his horn and the speed suddenly increased. To be honest, he wasn't very used to driving and his sitting posture was uncomfortable. He was too short. The car scraped and rubbed all the way, and the little lowly in the back seat was scared. She was talking to someone to herself, no need to think, it was Professor X. Rogers drove for a few minutes, stopped at the traffic light at the intersection, picked up the pants and wig from the passenger seat, and ran away. You can find someone to report to the police, or wait here. The police will come soon. Of course, this car won't last long. Little Loli's mother probably called the police long ago. Rogers found a manhole cover on the street and crawled in under the monkey-like gaze of passersby. Closing the manhole cover, Rogers didn't dare to rest. He was panting like a cow, feeling weak all over, sweating profusely, and didn't know where he was in New York. But in short, he temporarily escaped a disaster. In the next few days, Rogers lay up and down day and night, wandering around more carefully than ever. He went out for zero yuan at night and hid in the sewer to sleep during the day. He went to the river to take a bath, changed his clothes into women's clothing, and put on a wig, which really had a little girl's flavor. His face looked good, but there were still some benefits. All of this is to avoid Professor X's search. But his zero yuan purchase behavior also caught the attention of the police. Rogers is not very worried about this. What he is most worried about now is Professor X using those two robbers to lure him out. But he dare not act rashly and oppose the X. Men, there is no doubt that he is foolish. But what's wrong with avenging parents and oneself? If the law and the police don't care, then don't blame Rogers for using private activities. Rogers hid for over half a month, constantly exercising his body and draining his spiritual strength. This made him look much stronger, with muscular contours on his body and much stronger spiritual strength. The mutant's ability allows him to slowly improve his physical fitness and spiritual strength every time he drains himself. This is much faster than exercising and improving for ordinary people. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Chasing the Assassin You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Chasing the Assassin Through repeated attempts, Rogers discovered that with his current spiritual strength, he could make the target lose most of his resistance by just getting close to them. As long as his spiritual power rushes into the other person's mind, they will immediately have a splitting headache and a dull gaze. This has been confirmed by the mice. On this day, he finally couldn't bear the anxious weight in his heart and returned to the vicinity of his burned-down home. Late at night, there were no pedestrians on the street, and the street lights were still on. Occasional cars that had been driven made this place appear less quiet. Rogers pushed open the manhole cover and crawled out. He was dressed in women's clothing and wearing a wig, ready to survey and see if there were any new families moving in. Cute little one, are you lost? Do you want my brother to take you home? Rogers nodded helplessly with tears in his eyes. Two white beards across from each other glanced at each other with lascivious smiles. Come on, give your hand to your brother. Rogers obediently grabbed the hands of both of them, and then, ah. Shit. The two were overwhelmed by Roger's spiritual power on the spot, rolling on the ground with headaches. This is the difference between a normal human and a mouse. Rogers pulled out a small knife tied to his thigh and crouched down, aiming it at one of the people's throats. This is one of the gains of zero yuan purchase. Mom provoke fake, I want to use my hashtag it to enter your hashtag and make you add it dot. That person started rap on the spot. Who would believe him if you said he was white? It was Rogers who dealt him a blow before he calmed down. I'll ask an answer. Fuck, are you a man? 
Ah. Ask me, I will definitely say it. After the inquiry ended, Rogers was not interested in staying here anymore. But another white man took advantage of Rogers turning around and immediately exploded and injured people. Although Rogers' body is only in his teens, he has a rapid self-recovery and has reacted well. With a surge of spiritual power, pick up a small knife and cut your throat, ending the battle. Don't kill me. Please. The only remaining person trembled. Rogers gave him a cold glance and struck, ending his life. If you want to blame it, blame your friend. However, Rogers really has to thank them. Janet, Calvin. Rogers picked up his wig from the ground, his eyes shining inexplicably. Did I really find it? According to these two people, there are several laundry detergent vendors nearby who specialize in these activities, perhaps related to them, located in the abandoned factory building to the west. And now, it's already late at night. Rogers wiped off the bloodstains on the knife, put on his wig again, dragged the bodies of the two people to the sewer, and then continued the operation. Since we know the location, let's get things done tonight to avoid long dreams. He is not afraid that Professor X will send someone again now. The portal of his consciousness has been completely opened, and he can travel to other worlds at any time. And X. Men can't work day and night like themselves, can they? Do they have nothing else to do, just focus on themselves? Even if caught, then run away, it's not a big problem. Now all you need to worry about is that the robber will be sent to the police station by Professor X. On a pitch black night, Janet was a black man, playing outside with a shotgun in his hand, smoking boredly, perfectly blending into the environment. Janet, it's so late, I'm afraid no one will come. Pack up and get ready to leave. Calvin walked over from a distance, holding the zipper in his pants. He was also a black man. What you said doesn't count, the boss is still in the factory. Janet rolled his eyes in silence. Calvin was about to speak when he saw Gilbert pointing behind him and saying, No, someone's here. Falk, we'll have to wait until dawn again. Carl angrily took out his pistol and walked over to Janet. What would you like to order? Wait, is it a child? Rogers fixed his gaze on the shotgun in Janet's hand. How come? I haven't seen it before. The gun below me is bigger, should I take a look? Gilbert laughed heartily and gave Carl a look. This is the gun. Rogers would never admit that he was wrong. The shotgun had a sunken body, which was exactly the same as the gun he had robbed. Did you get lost or came to buy something? Calvin remained expressionless, pretending not to see Janet's gaze. He is not a pervert. Rogers stepped forward and grabbed their clothes. You do. Buzz, Roger's spiritual power was overwhelmed to the greatest extent, causing him to feel dizzy and dizzy, with unbearable pain. Meanwhile, Janet and Calvin's ears were bleeding, and they rolled their eyes and fell to the ground convulsing, emitting subtle moans of pain. Rogers walked unsteadily over to pick up the shotgun, then pinned Calvin's pistol to his waist and pulled out a small knife, ready to cut off the tendons of both of them. He can't kill two people so cheaply. He hid for more than half a month, why? He can't let these two guys die so easily. Rogers struggled to drag their bleeding feet towards the forest further away. Although he was a bit dazed, he felt a sense of revenge in his heart. Mom, fuck, my head. Calvin woke up first, whispering softly, his eyebrows furrowed with the piercing pain in his limbs and mind. Wake up. Rogers sat aside and stabbed Calvin with a knife. Who are you riding on the horse? Ah. Fake. I ask, you answer, understand. Okay, okay. Calvin nodded quickly. He was still a bit confused and didn't know why he had become like this, but the huge pain in his chest made him have to listen to this girl in disguise. Half a month ago, did you carry guns and guns to a newly moved couple? I, ah. Yes, yes, it was me and Janet who snatched it. With another cut, Calvin answered with pleasure. 
That's right. What's right? Calvin asked weakly. Rogers smiled and slashed at him one after another. After you finish grabbing the money, just leave. Why did you set fire to it? It wasn't me who let it go, it wasn't me who let it go, it was Janet who let it go. Please, don't kill me, please, what else do you want you to say? Calvin felt increasingly weak and watched as he was about to be scared to pee when he was stabbed open in the chest. I asked why you set fire. Rogers let out a sharp cry, simply venting his emotions. It's not me. Ah. It's Janet, he's a pervert. He likes to watch others' screams before they're burned. Don't kill me, don't kill me. Please. Rogers remained unmoved and never used his knife again. Let him watch as he loses too much blood and waits to die. As a result, the target turned to the still unconscious Gilbert. Huh, Rogers breathed a sigh of relief as he couldn't hold on any longer. His eyelids became heavier and heavier, and he had activated his spiritual power too many times in a short period of time. Like to hear people howl. It's really abnormal, Rogers murmured to himself. My hands and feet, mom provoke fake, are that bastard. At that moment, Janet woke up. Rogers showed a cruel smile. Come on, let me hear your mournful cries. Mom provoke fake, ah. I was wrong, I was wrong. What are your requirements? Ah. Fake. I'm XX, you're XX. Did you set the fire on? What fire? Let go of me quickly, ah. Roger stabbed into Janet's eyes, not deep, but with great effect. Woo woo, Janet's face was full of tears, his mouth couldn't stand up, and death and fear were spreading in his heart. He didn't even understand what was happening, and in the blink of an eye, his tendons were torn. A child even asked some inexplicable questions. End of this chapter Chapter 7 I am Roger and also Roger Wilson. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 I am Roger and also Roger Wilson After Roger smashed Calvin's egg with a stone, Gilbert couldn't resist anymore. He even said what underwear his mother was wearing. Robbery is his hobby, it's Calvin's hobby, setting fire is purely for fun. This is human nature. Once evil begins, if one does not control their actions, demons will be born from the bottom of their hearts and become unbridled. Rogers received the answer and ended the lives of both. The scene was somewhat cruel, and he couldn't bear to wretch several times. Huh, Rogers exhaled a long breath and lay next to the body. He wanted to rest for a while, he was too tired. Suddenly, the air in front of him twisted, and a blue-skinned guy appeared out of thin air, looking like an avatar with a demon's tail behind his buttocks, which was also blue. A lifelike image of a hellish demon with blue skin. In front of him was a wheelchair, with a woman beside him. He carried both of them on his shoulders with both hands, and on the wheelchair sat a middle-aged bald man named Professor X. Rogers found himself unable to move, and the air around him seemed to freeze, setting him in place. Shotguns and pistols also floated up and went to the woman's side. Professor X had already found these two guys and paid attention to them. Whenever they had a problem, Professor X would immediately notice it. Unfortunately, Professor X noticed that the two of them had mental health issues and ultimately came one step slower. After all, X.men also need rest. The teleportation ability of the Blue Demon is limited and must be within his line of sight, so he came a bit slower. Oh my goodness, Rogers, you. You cruelly tortured them to death. Professor X glanced at the body with a mournful expression on his face. The next moment, Rogers found himself able to speak and said, Yes, it feels pretty good. Professor X fell silent for a moment, and the blue demon behind him hesitated to speak, with some emotions in his strange pupils. Professor X, thank you for your continued attention. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have awakened my spiritual power, said Rogers as he closed his eyes and entered the realm of consciousness, touching the portal. 
A wave of information surged in, and the portal prompted Rogers to make a request. Can you still make requests? Go to a world that can enhance my X gene. Rogers. Professor X seemed to want to say something, but as soon as he spoke, Rogers disappeared out of thin air. I bought it, he disappeared. Professor, he also has teleportation ability. The Blue Devil hesitated for a moment and asked in confusion. Professor X was also stunned and said, It's terrible now. From now on, I am Roger and also Rogers Wilson, Rogers thought silently. Then, he found himself appearing in a large laboratory, with all the experimental personnel wearing protective suits looking at him, which made Rogers look a bit ugly. Subsequently, another wave of information flooded into my mind. Fifteen days. This message states that for the first time traveling, the portal will close after fifteen days. Once the portal closes, Rogers will not be able to return. He can only stay in this universe, waiting for the next portal to open before returning. Moreover, there is a significant difference in the passage of time between the two sides, but as the portal is used and Rogers becomes stronger, this difference will gradually adjust. Don't move. In a few seconds, a fully armed special forces team with live ammunition rushed into the laboratory, and their guns aimed at Rogers, bringing his consciousness back to reality. Rogers. Dot. I really there are more than ten guns on the other side, and his quick self. Healing is useful. Rogers silently raised his hand and cursed the mother of the portal in his heart. He just left the wolf pit and entered the tiger's mouth. The special forces team saw this and a person handcuffed Rogers. Rogers rolled his eyes and looked around, discovering that many of the items in the experiment were labeled as produced by Water Company. And inside the nearby transparent glass cover, there is a naked girl with a bald head soaked in green liquid, and her eyes are still moving more transparent glass covers contain deformed products of genetic mutations. These things make this tidy and hurried laboratory look a bit eerie and eerie. Obviously, this is the secret laboratory of Walter Company. Black Robe Inspection Team Does this child suddenly appear with teleportation superpowers? But why did he appear in the laboratory? Only a few people here know. Perhaps it was an accident. Look at his bewildered expression. Maybe it's a good experimental subject. Seeing no danger, the experimenters wearing protective clothing began to communicate. An experimenter took out a sedative from a small refrigerator that was emitting cold air and walked towards Rogers. The special security team is in contact with people and reporting the situation. Rogers did not resist or teleport immediately, he planned to see the situation first. After all, I finally came here. He didn't finish watching the black robe inspection team, and more of his knowledge came from online short videos and comments below. He knows that there is compound number 5 in this world, which can give people superpowers. Famous Chinese people grew up soaking in compound 5 from a young age. Although he himself inherited some of his parents' superpowers. This leads to his genes being very strong. But fundamentally, it's still the same set of genetic mutations. And mutant humans are experimental products of the heavenly god race, also caused by genetic mutations. It is uncertain that compound 5 can enhance one's X gene and achieve secondary mutations after all, my requirement for the portal is to go to a world that can enhance the X gene. I won't mutate into a monster myself, will I? Can I talk to your boss first? Rogers pondered before speaking out. The experimenter holding the needle was stunned for a moment, then smiled and said, Poor little one, don't tell me you deliberately teleported yourself here. Why not? I also have the ability to heal quickly. I can soak in compound 5 for a long time. I know that Water Company has always wanted to balance the Chinese people, why not give me a try? As long as they receive this shot, they will find that they have a quick self-healing ability, so Rogers plans to give it a try, and it won't hurt either. Moreover, he can run away at any time within 15 days. Quick self-healing. 
The experimenter put down the needle in his hand and glanced at the security captain. Everyone listened very clearly to his conversation with Rogers. Do you have a grudge against your motherland? Many people have grudges against their motherland, Rogers said calmly. His identity will definitely be investigated, and everything can only be judged by luck. This feeling is extremely bad. If I had known that Rogers would have let the portal send him to a safe world. At least it can develop safely, right? Boss, please indicate. The security captain said to the earphone. First, inject him with some high dot purity compound number 5 to see if it works. If it works well, increase the dosage. If it works, let him take a bath directly. Then I'll talk to him again. If it doesn't work, then pull it down. Also, ask him how he found out about this secret experiment. After speaking, the president of Water Company hung up the phone. For him, Roger's demands don't matter at all. Previously, there were people with self-healing abilities participating in experiments, and what were the results? There are many superhumans in this world, and there is no shortage of Rogers. He is not afraid that Rogers will turn his back when he becomes stronger. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Secondary Mutation of X-Gene You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Strong, but not strong enough. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Strong, but not strong enough. President Edgar gazed through the glass at the boy standing up from the high. Purity compound number 5, feeling slightly excited. The body data detected by the equipment alone had surpassed that of ordinary people by dozens of times. This improvement is very significant. He is looking forward to this guy becoming his secret weapon, to take a surprise when the people of his country lose control. He believes that Rogers can soak for a few days at a time, which is not the limit. Rogers can also become stronger. And Rogers, who stood up, felt like he had changed and become stronger. His body has grown a lot, looking like a teenager rather than a child. His muscles have become muscular, his lines have become graceful, his senses, his thinking, and everything about him has become stronger, including his spiritual strength. He could see every pore of the man in the suit in the distance clearly, and he could hear the faint sound emitted by the experimental subject several tens of meters away. His thinking is exceptionally fast and clear. The world had changed in front of Rogers, to the point where he felt like he had given birth to a new force, one that was similar to the power of the soul, but completely different. The pursuer instinctively, Rogers slowly floated up. Is this mindfulness? Or is it called psychic power? It seems that during the process of soaking in compound 5, the mutant's ability to strengthen brain cells, combined with Rogers' willpower, gave birth to either mental or psychic power. Rogers decided to call it the power of mindfulness. Take him to test his physical data and superpowers, and I will talk to him later. Edgar had already imagined that his position in the company was more stable. If Rogers steeped in high dot purity compound number 5 several times, he believed that with Rogers' physical adaptability, he could definitely reach or even surpass the level of his homeland. Moreover, Rogers' cells have great research value and are highly adaptable to high dot purity compound 5, which previous experimental subjects did not have. Unfortunately, he didn't know that this was the limit at which Rogers could become stronger through Compound 5. The rest can only be developed through one's own efforts. This is related to Rogers' mutant abilities. There are benefits, but naturally there are drawbacks. Even through the glass and soundproof environment, Rogers still heard what Edgar said. But he didn't do anything because he was also very curious about his current self. How much has he become stronger? The butcher, accompanied by his black-robed inspection team, was looking outside the psychiatric hospital. Based on investigation and intelligence, they found the keyword compound number 5 and arrived here. The time has come to test everyone. Go in and grab compound number 5 directly. Time is limited, 
and we must retreat before the arrival of our motherland. Huey, pay attention to the messages sent by your superhero friend, take action. The butcher briefly spoke a few words, and then with Huey, the wolf girl began to take action. In the spacious room made of steel, various exaggerated fitness equipment was placed, and Rogers, accompanied by a group of special security guards, put on his clothes and entered. One test after another has begun. His punch could deliver 68 tons of force, directly shattering the tester. His running speed reached 160 meters per second under full force. His various physical signs have exceeded the average person by more than 10 to 100 times. His reaction speed allows him to instinctively dodge bullets, and his skin is so tough that three adults can only scratch with a knife with all their might. And the self-healing ability can allow these scratches to recover within one second, and his self-healing ability has also become stronger. His cells only secrete a small amount of creatine, and he can exercise for a long time without getting tired, provided that he has enough energy. This fully demonstrates that Roger can withstand bullets hard, but he cannot withstand swords of the same level of superhumans. His physical defense is a weakness. And this is still the result of Roger's not knowing how to fight and not being able to fully exert his power. Roger's is already very satisfied, of course it is impossible to compare with the people of his homeland, or even compare with Queen Maeve, but Roger's true ability is adaptation, evolution. He can continue to strengthen through his own efforts. Alright, let's test your superpowers now. What is your superpower? Teleportation. The staff stood far away from Rogers, holding notebooks and recording data, afraid of being accidentally killed. No, it's mindfulness, Rogers replied softly. He lifted himself and the dozen or so security guards around him with his mental strength. It's not difficult, but it's also not easy. This indicates that his memory is not very strong. Thick gift crab. The staff and security team are a bit panicked, after all, they all know what superhumans are like. But Roger didn't harm them, he just unleashed his spiritual power to invade their minds. This was an easy success, Rogers saw their memories, just like watching a video, he was just watching a video played on more than a dozen screens at the same time. He can even filter these memories and integrate them into his own memory. But Rogers did not do so because he was not sure if it would lead to a change in his thinking or some other problems. Moreover, Rogers discovered that he could delete the memories of others, as long as he stirred them with his spiritual power. Unfortunately, he couldn't find the trick to modify his memory. He could easily use his spiritual power to implant some ideas into the other person's mind. For now, he has mastered so much power. This also indicates that Rogers is more gifted in the use of spiritual power than his mental and physical abilities. He released the staff and security personnel, and these guys panicked and fell to the ground. What did you do to me? The staff asked cautiously, feeling that something was wrong with him. Rogers pointed to his head and said, Remember, did you have combat skills in your mind? The staff looked eerie upon hearing this, and he realized that he had a pile of knowledge about combat and firearms in his mind. You can invade the brain. The staff reacted and he trembled all over, his voice trembling. No side effects. Rogers just filtered out the knowledge from the security personnel's memory and inserted it into the staff's memory. Now, based on the situation, there seems to be no problem. For safety reasons, it's better to observe first. Strength did not make Rogers inflate. He is now very strong, but in Marvel or DC, he is still far from strong enough. His mental and spiritual strength may be weaker than that of Phoenix, losing to Professor X, still far from the Omega level, and his physical fitness cannot be compared to the Hulk or Thor. Superman or something, not to mention it. The base has been invaded, please evacuate the staff. The base has been invaded. Suddenly, a red light lit up in the room made of steel, and an alarm sounded. Rogers raised an eyebrow, somewhat eager to try. Will the Chinese people know that the secret base of Water Company has been invaded? 
with his unpredictable personality, if he comes, who knows what he will do. If he feels threatened by himself, he may erupt on the spot. Rogers wants to try how powerful his mutant abilities are. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Manipulating Motherland People. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Manipulating Motherland People Admittedly, his pure physical fitness cannot surpass that of a Chinese person, but he has spiritual strength, and Chinese people do not have spiritual defense. On the contrary, the spiritual weaknesses of the Chinese people are very prominent. If one's mutant has strong abilities, then the motherland will be a good sharpening stone. His hot gaze made Rogers also eager to try and steal a lesson. He doesn't mind having more superpowers, and it's easy to enhance the power of his hot line of sight as long as he keeps firing lasers. Breaking through the upper limit of one's own eye capacity will enhance the ability of mutants to see heat, and also make the eyeball's self feel stronger and more resistant to high temperatures. I'm really sorry for myself for not having such good abilities. Rogers did not withdraw with the staff. He fell to the ground and strode towards the laboratory takeout. With a sweep of his spiritual power, the entire experimental base's personnel distribution appeared in his mind. Through them, Rogers saw a ruthless man who looked like a wolverine, a butcher. Where are you going? It's very dangerous outside. Chinese people can come at any time. You can't beat him now, come with me. At a corner of a hallway in the experimental base, Rogers met President Edgar. Edgar treats Rogers as a backup and cannot reveal it now, he can only hide it. Those in danger are the people of our country, Rogers used his mental strength to hold him in place and strode away with a meteor. This move is quite useful, he should thank Professor X. Fake. I don't know how tall the sky is. Hurry up and contact the vice president, we can't let the Chinese people come here. Edgar was furious, afraid that Rogers would go out and die, and afraid that the Chinese people would go crazy after killing Rogers, and ran to warn him. The steel gate of the laboratory has been opened, and the butcher trio is charging towards the inside of the laboratory. Bullets seem to have eyes on them and cannot hit them at all. But soon, their progress was hindered. Stormwind looked at the three of them, smiled slightly, pushed her hands forward, and the purple electric current was released from her hands, knocking all three of the butchers out. Fake. The butcher suppressed the numbness and pain caused by the electric current and lifted the gun before shooting. Da da da. The storm woman did not dodge or dodge, once again converging plasma and releasing it from her hands. This time, the current directly connected to the butcher and collided with the wall, unable to fall down. The current of Storm Woman is very weak, and to kill, it takes a long time to release the current. Huey and the Wolf Girl saw that the situation was not right, so they immediately retreated. Hurry up to the back of the shelter and hide, shooting. The bullet hit Storm Girl, only pushing her back a few steps. But the effect was also very good because Storm Girl was interrupted by the release of the current. The butcher just landed in a daze, unable to take care of his electrified life. Mom, fuck, there's actually superhuman defense here. Withdraw, the Chinese are flying this way. At this moment, Huey received the news of the starlight and trembled with fear. Mom provoke fake, withdraw. The butcher blushed and his veins jumped. With a command, the three of them quickly ran away. You guys, don't give me the expensive goods yet. Storm Girl turned her head and roared at the special security team, then angrily rushed up to grab the butcher and beat him. If it weren't for the butcher's thick blood, she might have beaten her to death with just a few punches and two kicks. At this moment, Rogers flew out from behind, and all the bullets he passed by were hovering. Stormwind looked at Rogers with some surprise, obviously not expecting his superpowers to be able to fly. Then, she punched the butcher and he fell to the ground in pain on the spot. Rogers is not interested in their fight, as for the current of Stormwind Rogers couldn't get interested either, so it's better to find a high dot voltage wire to be electrified. Rogers's flight speed was not fast, 
but the psychiatric hospital was not large either. Soon, he walked out and saw the blue sky and white clouds, silently waiting for the arrival of his motherland. In no time, the butcher and the other three fled in confusion, leaving Storm Woman nowhere to be found. Before leaving, the butcher looked up at Rogers and sighed, another superhero. Dot. Without waiting for him to react, the Chinese broke through the sound barrier and flew here. His gaze locked on Rogers, and his eyes suddenly emitted a crimson light. Are you something the company is hiding from me? Rogers adjusted his spiritual power to its maximum and slowly landed on the ground, saying, You are a wild seed that no one loves. Z, a crimson beam of high heat shot out from the ferocious expressions of the Chinese people. Without a doubt, Rogers hit the nail on his heartache. He grew up in a laboratory from a young age, without empathy, family, or self-esteem, and particularly yearned for family and love. More importantly, the Chinese people enjoy using hot line of sight in combat. Rogers didn't dodge or dodge, using his eyes to catch the hot gaze of his homeland. The burning pain immediately spread through his eyes to his head. After a second, Rogers lost sight of his eyes, but he could still perceive his surroundings through his spiritual and mental power. The tremendous impact shattered the slate under his feet. Rogers is fully unleashing his mutant abilities. His eyes were burning red and carbonized, but with strong self-healing ability, they were quickly repaired and peeled off in less than five seconds. The Chinese are very strong, but he is just a beggar's version of Superman, not enough to instantly kill Rogers. But this power still exceeded Rogers' ability to bear it. His eyes were slowly being shot through. Rogers's spiritual power moved, and his mental impact erupted in the minds of his compatriots. He immediately let out a muffled groan, and the power of the beam weakened. Although the motherland is angry, he is not a fool. When he saw that his hot gaze was unable to take down Rogers and he was attacked inexplicably, he gave up his hot gaze and rushed over with a punch. This simple and rough punch was dodged by Rogers with his head on the side. The Chinese man's fist could not break the sound barrier, and his speed was fast, but Rogers' reaction was not slow either. Buzz, with a stronger spiritual impact, the Chinese knelt down to the ground, covering their ears with a painful and ferocious expression on their heads. Once again, a crimson light appeared in their eyes. This is not Rogers' limit, he only used about a quarter of his spiritual power. It can be seen that the brain of the Chinese people is an important weakness, as they do not have a super brain. Moreover, the self-healing ability of Chinese people is not much different from that of ordinary people, and if they are injured, they must endure it. Your eyes are not awesome. Rogers hit the head of his motherland with a football kick, kicked him away, and then implanted ideas. Chinese people feel like they have received an unprecedented insult. A little kid who dares to challenge his authority, I should burn him alive with my eyes. Ah! The Chinese stood up again, roaring as a beam of high heat shot out of his eyes. Rogers once again pushed himself up hard, feeling that his eye cells were constantly mutating. The motherland slowly took off, and he stood tall with a terrifying expression on his face. You hybrid product that emerged from nowhere, die. The beam he emitted became even hotter. End of this chapter